Hi, this is Dave from geekanoids.co.uk and just over a week ago I bought you an overview of the HP Storageworks X510 Data Vault. Well, in my continued coverage, I'm going to bring you up to date of how the device has been performing and on screen you can see the actual Windows Home Server console running on a Mac. Now, this is one of the features I wanted to concentrate on to show you exactly how you can configure and control the X510. This uh, control panel that you can see on the screen at the moment is identical to what you get on a Windows based PC, albeit that HP have bought things bang up to date and you do get full control on the Mac operating system. Now it's worth mentioning that to set up the X510 you do need to run the software on a Windows based machine for the first time but once the X510 is set up and running, then you can configure and manage it on either the Windows or the Mac platform as we're doing now. Once software is installed, you can have a visible uh, icon up here in your menu bar. And if you click on that, you can either open the home page in a browser or launch the Data Vault console as you're seeing here, or you can uh, do some settings for recovery assistant and waking on LAN activity. There's also preferences, which if I click on that, this will launch the preference uh, pane for the X510. And here is where you put in your server name and the server password. As you can see, I've already done that and it's authenticated that I've got those details correct. This is where I choose to show the HP Days of Vault in the menu bar also got some backup options and this is for setting up some of the storage space on the X510 for time machine backups and there's also a panel for checking that uh, you've got the latest data vault software. So I'm going to close this uh, control panel down and then take you back to the data vault console or Windows home server console as it would be referred to if you're running it on a Windows PC. Now before I show you the features that are given to you by the Data Vault console, uh, I will show you inset on the screen now a picture of the X510. And this is uh, my actual X510 that's installed in another room. Uh, it's actually running as we speak. And as you can see, as well as the three small LEDs at the bottom of the unit, there's also the three larger blue lights on the unit, which is actually showing you that I've got three hard drives installed inside. At the moment I've got a terabyte hard drive in there and two one and a half terabyte hard drives. So I've got a total of four terabytes of storage installed in that X510 at the moment. Now back to this control panel, it's very, very well laid out. At the moment I'm on the HP Data Vault tab and I've got an overview which is just a welcome screen. I can click tour doesn't really serve any purpose other than showing you how you can use the core features of the X510 unit. Then on to system status and this pulls down various notifications, um, the actual health of the, of the system and here I've got uh, what uh, percentage of the CPUs are being used for example. Here I've got my total storage capacity, how much is in shared folders etc etc. It's also worth noting that the soft server software version is up to the latest version, which is 3.0.14.33083. Something that is strange that I've noticed with the X510 is that the memory utilization is always stuck at this 33% mark. We've also got some notifications here, which is telling me that my McAfee virus protection is ready to install. I haven't enabled remote access and also there's a backup error on my Dell XPS 8000. So I can certainly rectify those by carrying out those tasks. Next tab down on the left hand side is a Mac overview. It's really just telling me what I can do with the new Mac features of the X510. And those include using it for time machine backup and also sharing my iTunes across the network. There is a lot more you can do 
besides that, but they're the main two features that I can see a lot of Mac users using. Then onto the media tab, this again is giving you an overview of how I can use the X510. And if I go down to in-home streaming, it shows me that my uh, media server is enabled. It also shows me that Twonky Media Server is already configured. Twonky Media is just another way of sharing uh, different file formats such as video files to stream them to other devices within your home. It offers a bit more compatibility than the standard Windows Media Server um, and it's something that I prefer to use so I'm using Twonky Media at the moment. Whenever there is a uh, settings that can be made to a particular uh, feature of the X510 there is also a settings button to the right so I can go into this and make further settings that only affect Twonky Media. There's also a uh, mention here that I can use for iTunes for streaming music and I can also enable and configure a media collector and also a video converter and these are all available by clicking these buttons on the left hand uh, panel as well. So if I go into web and iPhone streaming, this is where I can actually configure the X510 to actually uh, stream content, uh, be it video or music, to either my iPhone, iPod Touch, or even via an internet connection on a, an internet connected computer. So you could be in another part of the country, perhaps in a hotel, and you can stream content via your internet browser from the X510. If I go into server for iTunes, um, this tells me uh, that I can actually stream uh, from iTunes. It's um, configurable via this configuration button here. And then if I go down to HP Media Collector, it's telling me that I've got two computers that are currently disconnected from the X510. But just to let you know what uh, Media Collector does, is I can actually configure it and add computers into this list here. So for example, if I move my iMac across, and then I can set it to actually collect photos, music, and videos from my Mac or from my PC, and it will automatically organize those and put them into the shared folders that are located on those hard drives up in the X510. I found that using this is fairly good it's uh, quite restricted in where you can tell it to put the files. It will only actually uh, relocate them within specified folders on the X510 and you can't specify new folders. It also keeps the folder structure that is uh, on your actual iMac or PC. Um, so if you've got a particular folder structure with your photos organized, it'll pull that whole folder structure across. What I would like to see is being able to select custom folders to move certain content across. Maybe that will come in a future update. So let's close that window down. I don't want to save any changes I made. And then we can move on to Video Converter. Now Video Converter is very similar to the Media Collector, albeit that it watches particular uh, folders, which are called input folders, and it will watch these folders for when a particular type of file is saved into one of these folders. So perhaps you're saving a .h264 file or an .mpeg4 file. Once one of those files hits the folder, it will be converted and then output and saved to another folder. So it can actually watch for video TS files and then actually save those for playback without having to have a DVD present in your system. So you can play back full DVD titles from the X510. It also allows you to specify different resolution files for quicker streaming. So perhaps you want an HD version, which is on now, HD 1080, and I also want a version for my iPhone. So I can click on this uh, pre-configured tab here, and it shows me that it's going to output a smaller file with a smaller resolution that is a perfect fit for the iPhone screen, and will enable a lot smoother streaming to that particular device. Now. There is also other settings here for NTSC PAL HD720. Uh, for example, I can also click iPod Zoom. This is for smaller screen devices, and it will output a QVGA uh, resolution uh, movie to stream to that type of device. So very, very useful. And the fact that the X510 has already got a dual-core 2.5 GHz processor in it allows 
the unit that's stored in another room to do the crunching and converting of these video files leaving your computer free to do your work. Moving down there's also a photo publisher and this allows you to upload your photos to various websites on the internet um, including HP's own photo publisher website or photo sharing site. Uh, you can also uh, configure this to upload to websites like Flickr. And then there's also a media server tab and this is where you can actually share your music, photos and videos with your other uh, devices in your house. And you can see the list here. I've got uh, two media receivers which are streaming devices that I'm actually reviewing at the moment. I've got a Windows 7 uh, PC and I've also got my PS3 and all of these can gain access to streaming from the X510. I've been testing it with the PS3 and the streaming of movie files is very smooth, no stutters or dropouts or anything. I've been very satisfied indeed with the performance of the streaming. And then the last tab, Add Software, uh, actually launches a mini browser within this uh, Data Vault console. And you can actually uh, purchase or uh, search for free add ons for the HP X510 that give added functionality to the device. Now, as well as all of these tabs down here, we've got further tabs which run across the top of the Data Vault console. The Computers and Backup tab is where I control uh, what backups I'm sending to the device. At the moment I've only got it configured to back up my Dell XPS 8000 and this will automatically happen at predetermined times. Um, I can configure backups uh, when the machine is running and uh, get it to maybe back up once a day, maybe at midnight for example. Then I've got user accounts, I've got a guest account here and just one account for myself and within here I can uh, enable remote access and access to various folders on the X510. My shared folders uh, tab at the top here lists folders that I've created and also folders that were pre-created by the HP Data Vault software. It also shows if duplication is switched on or off. Now, I just want to cover this very uh, briefly here the X510, although you can load it up with up to four internal drives and of course the external drives as well, it does not offer RAID functionality. So it will not automatically mirror a drive. Instead it offers folder duplication. And by that I mean, for example, this Davo Mr. Mac folder I've got here, I can actually set duplication to on and then it will uh, create a duplicate of that folder on one of the other drives within the X510 so that that data becomes redundant. I've got a duplicate, so if one drive fails, I can always gain access to that data again. I like this setup a lot better because rather than having to have a duplicate of every single file on there, I can pick and choose what folders I want to have a duplicate of. Then we've got a server storage tab. This shows the drives that I've got installed inside the unit and tells me what bays they're in and whether they're healthy or whether there's a problem that I need to deal with. The last tab here is the Network at Risk tab and this is telling me I've got a backup error, I've also got some virus protection software ready to install and also that my remote access settings are disabled. Well, one of my gripes with the X510 is that I can tick all of these boxes to ignore these issues but as soon as I close the window down and then navigate away to another tab. If I go back to the Network at Risk tab, then those warnings come straight back up again. I think that I should be able to have a little tick box for ignore these forever, because, for example, I'm never going to enable remote access until I'm ready. So it should be a little bit more configurable than it actually is at the moment. Moving on, I've got a little Help button here, and I've also got a Settings button. This settings button gives me access to uh, various configurable options that are very similar to what are accessible via the main tab system that you saw when I first started this review. At the top, though, I can specify even more things like enabling a sleep time. So I've set the X510 to turn off at 5 to midnight and wake daily at 
7.30 a.m. I've got an updates tab, notifications, an LEDs tab where I can either make the LEDs brighter or dimmer. I've also got a hardware tab which is telling me what the fans and the temperature of the unit are doing and also a support tab as well. General tab, various settings again. Backup tab, this is when I can schedule those backups to back up my PC. Passwords, this is where I can change the password for access to the media server. I've got Windows Media Center turned off at the moment. Media sharing, I've got turned on, so this will allow me to share my content very easily. Remote access, I've got turned off at the moment, but if I turn this on, I can gain access to my content via an internet enabled connection. This is where various add-ins can be installed onto the server and Twonky Media is my preferred way of sharing media around the various uh, media servers around the house. It allows me to stream to my PS3 and to other devices very easily. And then Resources just gives me an overview of the configuration of the HP Storageworks X510. As you can see just very briefly before I come to an end of this review, uh, we've got 1.99 uh, GB of RAM or 2 GB of RAM and a Pentium dual core CPU and E5200 running at 2.5 GHz. So it's a very capable server. Last but not least, the correct way of switching off the server is not by pulling the plug or pushing the button. You've actually got a shutdown switch on this page here and this is the correct way of shutting down that server if you're perhaps going away on holiday and you want to shut it down for a longer period, then this is the way to do it. Let's close that window down and go back to the main welcome screen that you're presented with when you start the uh, Data Vault console. Well, over the past few weeks of using the X510, I've been extremely impressed with its performance. I can certainly recommend it. It's got a lot of options there for both Windows and Mac users. It's fantastic that both platforms are treated equally and given the same features. I just hope that HP don't take away any of the functionality and I hope they continue to improve the HP Storageworks and Media Smart series of servers. Well, thank you very much for listening. This has been Dave from geekanoids.co.uk. Come back soon and check out more reviews. This video review is sponsored by BMI Solutions, the largest reseller of document scanners within the UK with a price promise guarantee.